1972. Our founder, Gerard Morgan Granville, was really concerned how society was using technology. So Gerard wanted to found a living community that would live with the emerging alternative technologies to find out which ones really worked. We're looking at the biggest transformation of society we've seen since the Second World War. We have to prepare for that. We have to understand the technologies and have the numbers to make sure we have to make the right decisions when the crunch time comes. What you see around you now is the evolution of that process today, where we have a display circuit that tries to explore the issues, climate change, habitat and so forth, but most importantly to explore the solutions that people can take up at all tiers of society, from government solutions down to what people can do in their own homes. So what, what we're doing now is we're uh, continuing to expand the visitor circuit because we still want to convince vast numbers of the general public that there are solutions to the challenges, but we're actually expanding the academic side, the residential courses side. We're teaching plumbers to become solar water heating installers, electricians to install photovoltaics. CAT is kind of where people who really believe in things uh, are, they're kind of what's happening. I don't want to go to university where it's all in theory, I want it to be something that's really where people are living out what they do in practice, which CAT is. At LAMAS we are going to be using many of the skills and the techniques that have been developed here at CAT. CAT is continuing to lead the way in educating for sustainable architecture and sustainable technologies. Nobody can keep up with the, the rising prices of property, but we think that um, affordable housing should also be ecological housing, and ecological housing shouldn't be the preserve of the middle classes. And the two are compatible, so what we're looking to do is develop a vision for how we can prove that affordable housing is ecological housing. So what have I learned? I've learned that I want to live close to nature, in a community, with a house that makes a low impact on the earth. After all my searching, my journey brings me back full circle to just a few miles from where I grew up. Finally, my heart leads me back to Holtzfield. Hello. What, what do you like most about Holtzfield? Can I only say one thing? Sorry, just what do I like no, most? No, say, okay. say what moves you. Uh, I love the people. I love the place. I love the way it's all mellow and chilled and everybody's there for each other. I love the fact that my kids go out to play and I don't see them for hours and they come back and say, I'm starving! And that's all I see for them for hours and hours. And I love the buildings. I do love... The, the nature of how we're all just cutched in and we're all different, Everything's, every, everybody's different, everybody's different and all their houses are different and they kind of represent their personalities as well. There's a million reasons why I like living in Hawksfield. Uh, I the way life. I love the people. Chopping wood. That's the way the kids can play out the front. Uh, we live in a beautiful surroundings. Field. Oh, it's such a beautiful place to live. Beautiful environment. Uh, wonderful gardens and such an organic place. Uh, I don't know, what more could you ask for? Amazing, it's probably one of the best places on earth I can imagine bringing kids up. Just the freedom they have down here and the close community and everyone looking out for each other and they're safe, they can, you know, they have people watching over them all the time, everywhere they go, they, you know, it's fantastic. 
think it must have been about 11 or 12 years ago. And you came and you asked me about the situation then. And I remember becoming very emotional. What's happening here in Hullsfield isn't about physical structure, it's about connections and how how the roots, I said something like how the roots, we're all ro so rooted to the earth here. And those roots don't just go down, but they go out sideways and we're connected with each other's roots as well. So that you just can't rip somebody up, an individual up, without ripping the whole community apart. <laughs> As you can see, they couldn't do it. It didn't happen. We are all still here and we're all connected. And, and what's amazing as well is now that connectedness is, not, is passed down through the next generation. And they've made their own connections and they're connected to the generation before. So now it's so tightly interweaved that I don't think there is any unpicking it. And maybe that's the strength in community. And maybe that's why people are looking to set up communities and not just to cooperate on a physical level and, and in a supportive way, but to have that deep, deep emotional connection as well. I've settled, but Paul is moving on. The first Lammas pioneers are set to move onto the land. Good luck. The new low impact policy from Pembrokeshire is on the one hand forward thinking and totally enlightened and on the other hand it sets a very clear set of rules and conditions. To get planning permission Lammas needs to demonstrate that one, it will benefit society, two, that the project is off-grid, three, that the project will remain low impact into the future, four, that the land and project will be owned and run by the people. And five, that the people are working the land and meeting at least three quarters of their needs directly from the land. So what you're going to see are lifestyles which are intimately connected to and woven into the very landscape. You're going to see people who are building a new way of life for themselves.